Good morning everybody. Today we're going to do uh, a watercolour of Mykonos in Greece. I've put up a picture uh, for you to use which you can print, download and print so you can have a go at this. I've got an A5 piece of watercolour paper and I've stuck it down with masking tape around the outside to create a border and then I've blocked out the flowers, the buddleia, which are pink and sort of whitey coloured, with masking fluid. Now if you haven't got masking fluid what you'll have to do is paint around the flowers but make sure that you've got some gaps coming through the flowers uh, with the sky showing through. You can see those on the image. Okay, I've got my palette and I've got some uh, cerulean blue and some cobalt blue because they are Mediterranean colours. We're going to use those for the sky and for the rooftop and for the window frames. I've just loosely sketched out a little um, representation of this domed roof here. It has got a cross on it. It, it could be a chapel or a church but who knows. All right, so first of all, this is now dry. I dried it off with a hair dryer. I've used blue tinted masking fluid, and this is not permanent. Don't get permanent masking fluid. If it's permanent, it doesn't peel off. And the reason why we use this is so that we can peel it off and then paint the white areas that have been reserved by it. Okay, so I've got a couple of pots of water and I've got um, I'm going to use a reasonably large, this is a number 8 watercolour brush uh, and this is from artdiscount.co.uk so it's a cheapish brush um, but a number 8 should be big enough to cover that sky there. Now you can do it wet in wet or you can do it wet on dry. So wet in wet means that you wet the paper first and then you drop the colour into it. Wet on dry means that you just pick the paint up that you've mixed with water already and just put it down on a surface. There are different risks with each one of those. One of which is when you do wet on dry is that you end up with a patchy sky. Wet and wet tends to give you a more blurry result. So I'm going to use clean water and I'm going to cover the sky area first with a little bit of water. Now you don't want to overdo this, you want the paper to be wet. Now this cross is white and I should have masked that out as well but I forgot. So I'm just going to try and, and paint around it. The roof is blue so I'm not too worried about the water going into the roof. The we are in August at the moment, so the temperature is quite warm. So you may need to use a little bit more water than you would in the winter. So into the flower area as well, because we want some blue sky showing through those flowers. And you want it to be wet, but not dripping wet. You don't want this to run down your paper. I'm working flat here so I'm not too worried about it but if you were working vertically then you might want to be a bit more careful. So I'm just starting at the top and I'm using, you can use either cerulean or cobalt blue and I'm just going to let that drain away from my brush as I come down. I'm going to try and reserve that. But if you if you can remember, not like me, to mask out with the masking fluid that little cross as well. Take your colour into and behind those flowers. Okay, so let that soften and at this stage if you want to you can put a touch of purple I've just got a little bit of purple here and I'm just going to put that on the horizon and that will just warm up the horizon a bit. Well, 
like that. Got a touch there. Just around the horizon and remember to take it into your flowers. If you're getting blobs here like this, then you can take a piece of tissue and just soak up those blobs. That's if you're bothered by them. If you're not bothered by them, then just leave them alone. The less you fiddle with watercolour, the better really, as we all know. Okay. And at this time, you can see that in the image, there are some clouds. So you can do with your tissue paper, if you just roll the tissue up into sort of a cloudy shape and then just pop, pop it down on the paper like that. Then you can lift out some clouds while you're there. Each time you change, lift the uh, tissue off the paper, then just move it around to a cleanish area. You can see how nicely that works. You can also use your brush to do this. So if you've got a brush similar size to what you've been using, so I'm using the same one, um, clean water. So I dipped it in the water, I've washed all the paint off and I've just dabbed it off on the paper towel. You can just lift off your whites with the brush. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that while I'm here. Alright, so there's your simple clouds, just a few wispy ones. If you want the colour to be denser, then just add more colour onto that sky. But I'm going to leave that for now. Right, okay, so we want a turquoise kind of blue so for the water. So I've got, um, I think this is a sort of indigo colour here. Oh no, it's a... Uh, let's see if we've got some, something else. I've got I've only got some I've got this ultramarine have a play around with your blue blues and see what you've got because what we're going to do is we're going to mix a little bit of green into that blue in order to get like a turquoise you might have a turquoise in your set already so experiment with your blues and that that's quite nice that color there so that was a little bit of um, phthalo or indigo with a bit of, I think I, I think I just used a bit of sap green there and that's given me an indigo shade and I'm going to put that in the water but I'm not going to do it just yet because I, this is still wet. So I'm just going to take pick up my hairdryer and I'm just going to dry off the bottom section of this sky. really quickly okay and the reason why you do that just in case you don't know is um, so that it doesn't run into your sky so actually I could have done that because I'm going to paint the sea here so ideally I should use a smaller brush so I'll just pick up this smaller brush it's just a smaller round brush and I'm going to carefully paint around the edge of that building down to the edge of that concrete section there and then it goes in all the way along the horizon where there's some land in the distance there and take it again into your foliage So there we have a lovely Mediterranean Sea colour for the sea and it should go up there 
and into there as well okay and again if you want to strengthen it in places just add more pigment and you can do this as long as it's still wet so if you wanted to put some suggestion oops make sure you get a nice straight edge on that building of line into that sea but it is far away so you don't need too much of it now I will paint the land in a minute once that's a bit drier I'm going to now paint this um, roof the dome of the roof and I'm going to pick up this blue and I'm just going to put it over the whole roof area and I know that that sky is dry so I don't need to worry about it running into that sky nothing worse than sections of color running into a beautiful wet in wet sky it, it can ruin things and again I've got a the same size brush for this area because I know that I need to be fairly precise with the painting of this dome now I'm going to put a touch more color on it just to strengthen using the same cobalt blue or cerulean blue it really depends on your uh, the manufacturer of your paint as to what color you end up with cobalts can be very different between manufacturers so you choose which one is most suitable for your painting and then as we go over I'm just going to put that darker tone this is the darker tone that I put into the sky the cerulean blue in my set because we do want some definition and uh, to describe the form of this dome and I'm hoping a reason why I did this was because I know that everybody I know some of you have been on holiday and some of you might have had to come back from France quickly on Saturday um, but this might help you just remember how lovely it's going to be when we all get to go on holiday eventually when things start returning to normal and it's a nice picture to put up on your wall to make you feel warm especially today because it's very very horrible you probably can hear the the rain we've had some torrential rain thunder showers lots of lightning my dog's being proper freaking out and there's nothing we can do for him you just have to leave him he just sort of stands in the hall he's a whippet and just sort of stands in the hall shaking I feel very sorry for him but he won't take any kind of comfort we try feeding him and wrapping him up in blankets and all that sort of thing but so you can see that this is still wet and I'm just adding bits of color touches of color in there to give that sort of feeling of a little bit of shadow the the light is obviously coming the Sun is obviously over to the left here so we're using that darker cerulean blue it's still rich in color but darker to describe the shadow that's on the right hand side of this dome okay and I'm going to use the same color now to paint the window frame of this window here and if you've drawn this out nicely then you shouldn't have any real problems with this structure and also you know these buildings are quite old so they do look a little bit you know you can you can see the age in the the wooden frames and the walls so it doesn't matter if your lines are a bit wobbly at times it will describe the age of the building and if anybody's ever been here Mykonos 
or Santorini which is very similar you'll know that the buildings are just beautiful I've not been I've only ever seen it in pictures which is one of the reasons why I'm painting this as it is um, so again we just want something to darken up I just put a bit of purple or a bit of blue ultramarine blue into that cerulean blue and just put a little shadow or a suggestion of a shadow on the side of this window frame just to give it some form and along the bottom like that now with shadows and reflections and things like that it's always best to let them dry off and then see if you need to add any more definition so let this structure anything on the left will have a shadow to it so there you go okay inside is black so we'll wait for that to dry off these little windows they are sort of a dark color in the picture but I'm going to make them the same color I'm just going to initially color them in paint them in blue and then I'll darken them up in a minute now for this you can see I changed brushes I did that without telling you um, I've got a detail brush um, it's a size zero I think yeah um, and that will help you just to be very precise try not to use the same round brush for all the painting certainly don't go in with a brush this size because you'll struggle and you don't want to struggle you want to enjoy yourself so don't you know don't make things difficult for yourself but I am going to use the same brush to paint those distant hills in and because of some purple coming up out of the sky here I'm going to put a little bit of purple into that lower section and don't do this until everything's dry and then you won't have any issues with bits and pieces running into one another and make sure you drag it across all the way through those through that foliage and then behind that because the hill is in the distance behind that initial hill there you need to just put a bit more blue into it because as it goes away hills are affected by haze and the color of haze is blue so if you put a touch of blue into that color and then paint it in you'll see that 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 hill there will look like it's further away because it's got a bit more blue in it than this purpley color all right so right now we need we need to look at the color of the building itself now the buildings are white but because they are reflecting the sun's rays you would always have a little touch of color on them so i've got a alizarin crimson i haven't got any clean working space here but make sure that you have a nice clean working space now you don't need much of this alizarin crimson and you can use rose madder if you've got it any kind of, of basically there is um, not a lot of pinks in watercolor um, we tend to use the reds and all we do is we add water to those reds and they should give you a pinky tone and if you're not happy with the pinky tone then mix up some other color into it so i'm just going to try this out actually that's not bad i'm just going to put that over the whole building and you can see how thin it is paint very carefully around your windows and you can see how thin it is and make it sort of i don't know a little bit patchy looking because this building is white you can always add more color but it's more difficult to take it away so don't overdo this don't make it too thick 
you can always like I said once it's dried off if it's not strong enough then you can put some more on top but you can't well you can take it off but it's much more difficult so just a light coat as you can see in there of a well what I've used is the alizarin crimson it is a bit more orangey on that left hand side so let's try and just put a dab of orange and if you haven't got orange it's cadmium red mixed with cadmium yellow to make an orange and you can see that's a little bit more orange so we'll put that down there like that and see how that goes okay uh, and then in the shadow area which is on the left hand side of the building if we take a darker alizarin crimson and I'm going to put into that a really small dot of blue so it sends it so I've got alizarin crimson mixed with a little bit of the cerulean blue I'm going to try it out now I don't recommend that you try out your colours on the paper I often do it um, but it's that's my experience showing through so if you're not confident about the colours that you mix in then always have a test sheet next to your work so you can just test the colours that you're mixing now there is a highlight going along the top of this area that I'm just painting here so just be careful that you put that in or you leave it unpainted that is so you're sort of negative painting around that there we go so that's darkened up a little bit remember that your um, watercolors always dry lighter than when they're wet so again I'm just adding a little touch more I'm going to put another, a bit of orange in there oh dear that's too much so what I've got there is a bit of alizarin crimson a touch of orange and a bit of cerulean blue and I'm going to put that all the way along this area here I'm going to drag that down I'm not going to be too fussy about this like I said they are concrete walls and they're aged concrete walls so they're not going to be absolutely perfect don't make them absolutely perfect and now, now I've got a darker purple colour and now I'm going to pick up my detailed brush and I'm just going to block in some of these shadows. So this is cerulean blue mixed with a alizarin crimson. Now you can see that oops, my wall is still wet. So I'm not going to paint much more of that in so this wall above is still wet so I'm going to wait for that to dry I'm not going to wait for it to dry I'm just going to dry it off with a hairdryer quickly so we can speed these things up that should do it so I'm going back in with this Purple, so it's alizarin crimson mixed with cerulean blue because you want a really strong solid line in that shadow area there you don't want it to bleed at all like that make sure you fill it in nicely it comes down and then it sort of files off a bit a 
doesn't. And again, let that dry. And if it's not dark enough, then you can always add some more. What did I put in there? Carulean colour. All right. So we've got another shadow that's coming round here. So it goes underneath that area there down underneath this and hopefully you've all got steady-ish hands <laughs> but just take your time use the right sized brush and you should be okay. There we go. So we've got that shadow. That's darker. That's darker. Um, what else do we need to darken? I think I need another coat here, don't I? So I'm going to take that same colour that I mixed, that alizarin crimson, cerulean, add a touch of orange into it. Excuse me. And just put a darker shade on that area there. Just, oh dear. I just painted over that. I hope I can lift it off. Yes. If you need to lift off a mark like I've just made there, then just wash your brush off and lift it off with a clean, uh, semi-dry brush. So again, I'm going to just leave that and see how it dries and then assess as to whether I need to put more colour in or on. And when you put a second layer on top of a dry layer of paint that just me that is called a glaze just mixing up some more of that so that's alizarin crimson cerulean color the reason why we're using the cerulean is because it's in the sky and in the sea so it's really good to keep um, using the same colors now I'm not going to put that line I'm going to just put a line there but I realize that it's going to run into that so I don't want to do that so I'm going to put line down here because I want to define this a bit more and there's, there's a, a sort of descriptive section here like that and then it comes down breaks so a line breaks there I'm not going to put it just everywhere but and then I'm going to put a line to join up with that all the way along there this here is darker but it seems to have a little bit more blue in it so i'm just going to mix a little touch more blue in there to color that section in like that let me take the pigment up a bit because i've missed a touch out there okay there. Um, right, so there seems to be a bit more bluey colour underneath the foliage, so I'm just going to put that in. I can't quite work out on the image what that is, but if it's there, it's there. Let's put it in. So it's slightly bluer under there than it is everywhere else. Now I'm going to reassess those buildings once I've put my flowers in, um, but one thing I need to do is paint around that window. So let's just use those purple mixes that we just used before now I'm going to put it in over the hole I'm painting actually over the little holes and I've missed a bit there but never mind let's put that in so I'm just under painting the colour in first and then I'm going to put the lines in after once it's dry okay so there we go that's it darkened up 
I'm going to put this dark, I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Grey. If you haven't got Payne's Grey, just use black. Um, but I am going to put a bit of purple into the Payne's Grey just to soften it up. Not that much though. Just to soften the Payne's Grey down. So this is Payne's Grey mixed with purple. This is a time when you could use a square brush if you had one handy. And again, once you've painted it and it's dried off, if it's not dark enough, just put another layer on. But initially, just paint it in. You just never, like I said, you never really know what colour you're going to get once it's dry. So it's always a good thing to just have. There. Okay. And th th again, these are not dark enough, so I'm going to paint these. Although I think that that might not be dry yet. Let me just dry it off quickly. go for this again darken these windows up like that and again the left hand side of the windows would be slightly darker this image that I'm working off of um, is actually quite flat but it's up to you if you want to leave that flat then just fill in the whole square at the same time. All right, so are we happy with this? We are at the moment. Now I need to deal with this cross. So the cross, effectively because it's white, should have that pinky tone on it, but I'm going to leave it white and I'm going to go around the edges with that purple black Payne's Grey mix that I did. Now just be careful with this. It's right in the middle of your painting. You don't want to muck it up. So if you feel more comfortable using a pen or a pencil just to put these little shadowy bits in, then do that. Don't spoil your painting by not being able to be precise, especially if you've got wobbly hands. And I've got wobbly hands, but I'm just going to attempt it just to see <laughs> see if yeah it's it's not it's not working out too badly, um, and it's only a small area, so I'm not worried about it too much. And again, you can darken upside. So I'm going to leave it at that. I just want a suggestion there, and I'm going to use the same colour just to enhance the side of this window here. I'm just going to come and again you do need a steady hand. You don't want it to be too thick. I'm just going to put a shadow in here like this and along the bottom a line like that and then around side like that. Again you might want to darken it up a bit. Let's darken it a touch. Mm, maybe just towards the top side of this arch. I'll just put a little bit more pigment and along the bottom like that. And where it links up with the frame. Okay. Right, okay, so let's, I'm just going to put a little line along there just so that we can distinguish that that is something separate to that area. Okay, another thing I need to do is just put a line along here. Again, you need a steady hand. So 
So again, if you're a bit shaky, then please, you can use a pen or a pencil. Very fine fibre tip, something like that. Maybe just touch, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. I'm hoping that you can. You just touch the surface in places rather than doing a solid whole solid line down you don't want to outline it like a child would just little almost like you're almost touching the paper but not wholly then you get a broken line and that will help you to describe it a little bit better than using a solid edge all right let's just dry this off Okay, everything's blowing around all over the place. Now, so here's the time to take this off here, the masking fluid. So all you do, I'm just gonna move my paint set over a touch, is you can get masking fluid removers now, which is a bit unnecessary, but use a clean finger and just rub very gently and I mean gently just rub away and your work must be completely dry don't attempt it if it's not completely dry you'll end up tearing the paper off with the masking fluid and just rub small areas at a time don't be tempted to do this because it can cause all sorts of issues if you're not careful so in get it all off because you don't want to leave any on just gently I can see some paper coming up here so I'm just gonna now depending on the quality of your paper will depend on whether it pulls the paper up with it or not the cheaper the paper it tends to pull more if you put masking fluid can you see the little touch there I'm not worried about it too much in this area because it's going to be covered in foliage but if it was in the middle of your sky you'd be really fed up so good quality masking fluid good quality paper will work nicely but even then you can't guarantee it we've had so many paintings in the past that have been messed up by using masking fluid so you can see there's a little area here where it's come up a bit and it's come up a bit there you can't do anything about that you'll see when I paint it what what it does okay so that's what masking fluid does is it covers up the white areas so that you can um, especially for white things I mean these uh, Budlia are not white uh, well not in the picture they're not because they're in shadow they're like a creamy colour so it's not too much of an issue but um, yeah to reserve white areas so I'm going to mix now and I'm going to use a little bit of um, I'm going to have a go at using a bit of a sponge just to create a little bit of texture so I'm going to mix a now I've got dirty water can you see dirty 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 water so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that into another pot and I'm going to pour some clean water in because I want nice clean crisp colors and the, the key to one of the keys <laughs> to good watercolor paintings and good color mixing is clean water and clean surfaces so you know this is not good either so I'm just going to wherever I put my tissue I'm just going to clean up one section quickly it's, it's a bit difficult when I'm doing these paintings because normally you'd get up and you'd go and wash this at a sink or whatever but because I'm trying to do these all in one go 
uh, it makes things a bit tough. Okay, so we've got a yellow, cadmium yellow. Now that's very bright, as you can see, but we've got the same process. The more you thin it down, the lighter it becomes. And if you want a more of a creamy colour, well, there's like, there's all sorts of colours in there, isn't there? There's uh, pinks and um, a bit of orange and a bit of white and a bit of yellow. So I'm going to put a dot of red into that orange mix and it's gone sort of a burnt orange. I'm going to use a little bit of orange that I've got already in my palette. I'm going to thin it down and I'm going to test it on a piece of paper. Now that's, that colour is not too bad, I, qu I quite like that, but I do want it to be a bit more yellow. I'm going to put a bit more yellow back into it. Okay, so it might be more or less there. And I'm just going to put, and I said I was going to use a sponge. So you can use a combination if you want to of these colours. You normally need quite a lot of paint to work with a sponge. So I'm just dipping, sorry, you won't be able to see this. Apologies. So I've rear. So I've got a sponge and I'm just dipping in the colour. So you can see that. And I'm just going to put it over this lower area here like so and you can see it does leave a little bit of texture but not a great deal i'm going to pick up a bit more orange mix up that color again so i've got orange and yellow here like that back in with the sponge and again so you can choose if you want to use this technique or not it does leave a texture which is quite nice um, but it's up to you. You can just use a, uh, a normal paintbrush for this effect as well. You can sort of layer it up using dot marks and do the, make sure that you do. So I've got some yellow here and I'm just going to dot this in. Um, make sure that you start with the lighter colours and work towards the darker ones. All right. So in with, now there is some yellow up there, um, but then it starts going a bit pinker. So I'm going to add a little bit more red in here and just put in a little bit of red tone down the bottom there. And I'm just working quite thinly to begin with because I don't want to overdo it. And I don't want to lose this. Now, this intense pink that you've got, I don't have that colour in my set. And you can't really mix it. I mean, the closest I've got, I think, is this. Uh, that's like a, this is um, a magenta, what they call a magenta. So you can see that, can't you? I hope you can see it anyway. So I'm going to try this out on the paper here and just see. It's not too far away from the original colour there. So I'm going to, I'm quite happy with that. So again, like I said, you can use a sponge if you want to. Um, I'm going to go over that. You can see where that mark is in the sky there. I don't want that. I'm going to go over that, but I want to leave some gaps of the sky colour showing through so just be careful that you don't cover all that up all that lovely sky colour that's popping through those areas there I'm just going to put this really big and with this magenta colour you find that it does it does dry off a little bit pale but it's the closest, you can only work with what you've got. It's the closest colour I've got to a buddlier colour. Um, so I'm going to use it. And there's a bit down here. And it looks nice when it's sort of spread out and blurred a bit in the, on the edges, it'll really catch the light. So it should be quite intense. But when it's down here and in the shadow, 
it's quite nice if you can sort of blur it or blend it into the foliage and there is a touch down the bottom so I'm just going to pick up a little bit and just put a touch in down there so like I said just use whatever you're comfortable with with regard to this foliage if you've got a stipple brush then you could have a go using that if you've got sponges you can have a go using that if you've got um, just a bit of tissue you know there, there's all sorts of things that you can use to create texture in these flowers and also the other thing to remember is if you've got um, some little bits of white especially around these areas here then don't forget to reserve them but if you have lost them in certain places and you want to get them back again then don't be frightened to put some gouache into the colour once you've finished to bring those highlight tips back okay so in in the same way i've gone from the lighter oranges to yellows and now i've gone into the magentas and now the last thing to do is to put this green in and i've got a windsor green here and this is nice because it's not too um sort of fur like in color if you use a viridian or something like that it tends to be a bit dark and i'm just going to work around some of these patches here with this green and i'm going to look at the shapes that i've already created here and i'm going to work with them so i want to put some of that green in there but i don't want it to um, be too clunky look at the shapes that you've created and work around them and into them and sort of imagine that you, you are trying to make flower and leaf shapes so around the bottom you could al almost paint in some little leaf sort of shapes like that and you'll see that when you put the green against the darker the um the colors that you've used the magenta and the orange and things like that you'll see that 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 dark the tone of that green the dark color of that green will send some of these colors off more towards the white side of those colors and it's just the way that color works together very interesting um, but it will when you put certain colors next to others they are affected by them that's what the impressionists used to do i've lost my gap i, I had a gap there oh well never mind um, the impressionists were fascinated by how colors worked together and they used dots of colors to describe things and they put them next to one another and as a result they would create other colors now we've got a little sort of branch coming down here and probably this brush is a bit thick for that so i'm not going to use that for the moment i'm just going to continue to work into this area here with some dark green and I'm just using it almost straight out of the pan here because it's so dark and it's going to give us some contrast down the bottom here as to how we can describe that area and the fact that it's in shadow so use a nice dark tone and again think about those structures that you've put in and work with them so i'm just going to take that i have that really fine number where is it gone there zero brush and i'm going to put in some little suggestions of uh, stems branches whatever you want to call them coming through and the best thing to do is to work from the foliage and outwards so from the foliage 
and and outwards so that you get sort of fine tips coming from the edges of your brush and then again your lines won't be too clunky so a few a few branches here and there really help with that structure and if you pick up some paint as you're going along um, try and put some branches that go behind and then come out like that like that that join up with the flowers that you've got and so on and so forth but make sure that some of them go behind things like that and come out in front so from behind down behind that one down behind that one and so on don't overdo it less is more with watercolor okay i think i'm just going to pick up a little bit of that yellow color oops my brush was dirty i'm going to go back in with this yellow tone i'm just going to put a few little dots of yellow in here just to pick up the light on that because there's a bit of light coming through okay i'm going to leave that there i'm quite happy with that i quite like the delicacy of it um if you fancy working into it a bit more then do so um stage by stage make sure everything dries before you do the next stage make sure that you use this masking fluid very uh subtly and use a small i used i don't know whether you watched my video of how to use pens but in that i showed you how to use make ink using the inner section of the pen so you just smash the pen open this is a, a pen that has run out effectively so i smashed it open i took the inside out and i stood it in this pot of water and that's what came out of it so it makes an ink for you but also by smashing it i've got this nib and i basically clean the nib i wash the nib dried it off and then i've used that to put masking fluid on because it doesn't um affect the bristles because there's no bristles there so this is a good end for putting your masking fluid it's perfect for this because it just left a little tiny delicate the the problem with masking fluid is the the delicacy of it so you need the right tools to put it on with so the end of a nib a small brush um an old brush that you don't want anymore you can use that cotton buds end of cotton buds some people use the um, nail varnish pens uh, that you can pick up in in uh, bargain the stores they've got that little metal ends on and you can also get um, blending tools that I use a lot as well okay so I'm just going to move this over here and I'm just going to pop this if I remember which way I did it yeah this one came off first I'll just take this off and then you can see the finished article now it might be that I add some detail into this later on but I just want you to see more or less what the finished piece will look like and I hope you enjoy it and you can pop it in a frame put it up on your wall and dream of Mykonos okay thanks very much um, I just to mention one more thing these long tutorials will end at the end of August um, because I've started up a membership scheme there is a tutorial video on YouTube describing the ins and outs of that but you can also see details on my Facebook page on Twitter and Instagram um, so from the start of September you can register as a member um, paying £20 a month so that's only £5 a week and I will send you uh, a masterclass tutorial once a week and there will be an, I, an art chat to follow that up. So these long tutorials will end. All I'll put on YouTube for free are um, very quick, simple tips on mixing colors, um, how to apply textures and all that sort of thing. So they'll be sort of short, between sort of three and five minutes long. So if you want to continue uh, watching my tutorials, um, full tutorials, you'll have to become a member 
and join. Uh, if you like what you've seen today, then like and subscribe. Um, if you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can direct message me. You can message me on YouTube. Um, please get in touch and I'll give you the details if you can't find them via Facebook or YouTube or wherever. All right. Um, okay. I hope that you would like to become a member and follow me through this exciting new period of my teaching career. Um, one of the reasons why I brought this forward was because we have been told that we can't go back until into the community education center until November. So a lot of my students are proper stranded. So they've all joined. Um, so it will run and hopefully we can have a bit of fun or continue to have our fun that we would normally have face to face online. Don't be frightened of it. Just have a go. It's very simple. I just send you a link each week and you click on it and it comes up on your laptop or your computer or on your iPhone or any other kind of smartphone tablet that you use. It's li literally one click. All right. Good to have you with me here in the pouring rain in my studio. Hope you're all well and Try and enjoy the rest of the summer holidays. Hopefully this rain will stop at some point and see you again soon. Bye.